Thank you. Fantastic. Thank you, Orly. Thank you, Michael. And hello, all. Uh, my name is Or Katzman, and I'm the director of the SDG Israel Project, uh, and I work for the YK Center. Uh, and today I'd like to share with you some of the knowledge we've gained over the past number of years around financing the SDGs and creating national alignment around the SDGs. Our lessons learned come from our experience, our partners and initiatives from around the world, and some are from right here at home in Israel. So just before we begin, um, just so we're all on the same page, a short reminder about the Sustainable Development Goals, the SDGs. In December 2015, the UN achieved a remarkable agreement in which all the member states committed to reaching 17 sustainable development goals by 2030. And the SDGs represent a global consensus on what are the most important environmental, social, and economic goals we have as humanity. Uh, they represent a global paradigm shift, a, a united agenda to live on our planet sustainably. Now, to achieve the SDGs, we would require trillions of dollars in investments annually. Uh, currently, private and public spending on the SDGs is estimated at around $1.4 trillion, which is remarkable, but it's not enough. Considering the impact of COVID, we may be falling behind even further than we anticipated on many of the goals. Now, due to the size of investments necessary, the main question is how do we obtain these funds? Well, the SDGs may represent trillions of dollars in investment opportunities, but the vast majority of them are long-term investments. And moreover, many of the investments that the SDGs require are in environmental and social fields. These are areas that traditionally are harder to finance with private capital because they don't bring especially high returns. However, if we look at the actual impact of investing in social and environmental areas, much of the impact can be seen as external. We call these impacts economic externalities, plainly meaning they're not quantified in dollars or in economic terms necessarily. So that means that investing in SDGs doesn't necessarily create high economic returns, but they do create social and environmental impact that is beneficial for people, planet, and the planet and countries. So put simply, when investing in SDGs, the private investor receives economic profits while others like the government or the public get environmental and social benefits. Uh, this is why it's imperative for, for countries to think about investing in SDGs while encouraging the private sector to participate. So if countries have a vested interest in financing the SDGs, why don't they? Well, some do, uh, mainly countries that have resources for it, such as Sweden, the Netherlands, etc. But the majority of developing countries struggle with creating initiatives or the infrastructure to make the SDGs happen. Like I said, the SDGs require long-term investment and funds that countries may lack. So where do we find such investments? The main source of long-term investments in the world are the pension and insurance funds, and that includes national social securities. So this is where governments come in. Governments have to manage the financing of the SDGs and the regulation around them. A way to do this is if each country could issue a special long-term bond, which can cover those SDG investments. And this idea isn't a novel idea. It is actually based on what the, the state of Israel did in its infancy. Soon after the, the War of Independence and the State of Israel was established, government coffers were empty due to the high cost of the War of Independence and the unusual challenges that stemmed from the need to absorb a large number of Jewish refugees uh, from European and Arab countries. So the population was very young, there were no jobs, and there was an urgent need to invest in infrastructure, in factories, in housing, in jobs, and more. So the young government of Israel encouraged the creation of insurance and pension arrangements and established a social security system. This system would take care of the population that was due to retire several decades later, while incentivizing savings that were invested back into the country. So the government issued to retirement institutions long-term bonds bearing high yields, and they created tax arrangements that enabled these institutions to offer very attractive retirement plans with high yields to savers. This created a high rate of savings in our country and the funds raised through these special long-term bonds fed a development budget. 
That budget was used to activate a number of specialized development banks that undertook impact investments for development of the country. This was actually a major tool to finance the country's growth during its first four decades. So if I summarize that plainly, uh, governments issue bonds to insurance and pension funds who offer attractive plans to the public, incentivizing saving. Those bonds pay for a development budget that serves the country as a whole and create, it creates jobs for, more, uh, for most of the public. In turn, this motivates larger long-term savings and enables financial institutions to finance more impact investment in development. As long as these investments continue to yield high returns, this cycle of positive feedback continues. And there is essentially a lesson to be learned here. We can fund the SDGs through long-term investments of the pension and social security funds. And many countries, especially developing countries, can learn from this example of public-private collaboration and can adapt it to their needs. This is also an opportunity for countries with no social security to create that infrastructure, just like Israel did. Um, where they might not have uh, existing pension and social security systems. And where they do, they can expand it for funds for the whole of the labor market, including the self-employed. But then this kind of brings the question of what do we mean when we talk about financing the SDGs? What does financing them look like on the ground? And put simply, it means working with businesses and organizations that are advancing the SDGs. For us to be able to support such organizations, there must be a clear map of what organizations and businesses are aligned with the SDGs. And in 2019, YK Center, a private business focused on accelerating adoption of the SDGs, launched an impact initiative aimed at grassroots support for the SDGs. The community is aptly named SDG Israel and was designed as an ecosystem for the various stakeholders of the SDGs in Israel. Now, the SDGs can be convoluted at times with language that isn't suited for business and organizations might not understand it. Our community has developed a simple and efficient methodology to enroll organizations and businesses to incorporate SDGs into their core business and strategies, and then effectively communicate the impact that they create to the stakeholders and importantly also investors. So, if you think about it, many funding opportunities today, whether it's the EU or multilateral development banks or impact-oriented funds, they all want to know what SDGs are being achieved through initiatives that apply to their programs or to their funding or their grants. And in order to allow more financing, private, public, or blended, the initiatives on the ground have to know how to communicate their commitments to sustainability or to the SDGs in this case. Now, this is a, a gap that we are in the first stages of bridging. Our community works with various actors to make information, tools, and content around the SDGs accessible for all and in Hebrew. We create spaces for networking and collaboration. We raise awareness and map the implementation of the goals in Israel. The community holds events and workshops focused on practical implementation and best practices for impact measurement while using the SDGs as a framework. Our community puts an emphasis on helping small and medium businesses understand how to gauge their impact so they can align with national sustainability goals and communicate them properly. So I invite you all to visit our website, our sdgi.org.il, and be in touch with us if you would like to learn more about our work or about the idea of how we can finance the SDGs. And I hope that this glimpse at a possibility of alignment and financing around the SDGs will inspire you to make real progress on this Earth Day and truly push forth some meaningful tikkun olam, some repairing of the world out of Israel. And thank you very much.